Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker and we are in an affordable family vehicle in the 2023 Honda HRV EXL. And in this video, we're gonna tell you what it's like for our family of three. Stay tuned. Holly, so here we are. We've been traveling a lot this week, but uh, this has been our faithful ride for us mm -hmm. going to and from the airport and various different things. We've loaded luggage in the back. We've lived with it. This is very similar to the size vehicle that I drive daily. Mm -hmm. A little smaller than your Jeep, but what are your initial thoughts on this Honda HRV? This feels bigger than the Chevy Cruze. Yeah, yeah. Is it not? It's it's very similar in size. Okay. Inside. But very nice that you think it, it feels bigger. It is taller. It's still bigger. It is a hatch. But yeah, this is a, technically a subcompact uh -huh. um, crossover from Honda. Uh, why don't we start outside and come inside? Okay. Sounds so, great. Outside. I know already you love the color. It's the same color as your Jeep. It's the same color of like everything that we buy. But what are your thoughts on the styling of it? Um, I like the front better than the back. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of. I think Very I like happy the happy face. It is, and, and surprisingly, I'm. I think I might like the black one better than the okay. blue one. Just from the way that this is styled. Yeah. Um, but it is a cute, like you said, kind of a happy. Mm -hmm. vehicle. It got LED lights up front, LED running lights, mm -hmm. LED tail lights in the back. I but like the multicolor um, rear, no, what are these? Side camera, side, uh, wind, side mirrors. Mm -hmm. My goodness. <laughs> so the body color uh, mirror caps is what you're saying? So you You've have, got the body color and then yes, the black. Yes. Okay. Is that what you were saying? Yes. 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 It has the body color on the back and then the frame is black and I like that little yeah. detail. It's yeah. nice. And um, compact dimensions. Spit out. Yeah, compact dimensions versus the best seller, the CRV uh, from Honda, but still very usable for our family of three. Which brings sure. us inside. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts in here? Um, so I like the styling a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the softer yes. front of the dashboard. There's soft touch, sides, like a lot of places. Touch, yeah, it's kind of uh, squishy a little bit, which I really like Yeah, everywhere. Um, but there's different textures. So mm -hmm. like here, cause you're holding your hand mm -hmm. in the, the door handle. Mm -hmm. It's hard, it's not soft. It's, free, it's a frequently touched place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be easier to clean and mm -hmm. be able to take wear and tear a lot mm -hmm. better. I think than a different kind of material. So I like that, but then it's soft on the outside. So I yep. like that. I like all the different textures. You know, I like textures. This, the air vent. Reminds me of the Accord that we had. It does. And if you remember, I think it looks really cool, mm -hmm. but my mom brain says, when it gets dusty, am I gonna have to clean in between every one of those little honeycombs? Just go to gtgaragetalk.com slash gear and get you a California car duster. One quick swipe, That's you're good to go. Or that GAC stuff. Yeah, or that GAC stuff. So yeah, cleaning it would be easy, but yes, a lot of soft touch material in here. A lot of USB ports in here. We've got a USB-A up there, one on this side, one on the, your side over there. Very Oh, wireless car charger. That sort of works. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not have any problems with the wireless charger until you got in. I'm and a jinx. I have probably put more miles on this car than yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts about having it kind of buried behind the cup holders here? I actually like, to be honest, this is where I put mine in my Jeep. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have a wireless mm -hmm. car charger. Um, but I like that area because I can glance down without really taking my eyes off the road if like I needed to for something. Make sure it's charging, whatever. So I like that area. If we, you make a good point, if we had cups in there, it mm. might be a different story, but. What are your thoughts on storage in here? Storage is nice. Yeah. It's, there's some little cubby. There's a little cubby right here 
that I like. Um, the center console, I feel like could be a little bit bigger, but it's still like a good yeah. size. There's not a lot of versatility to it. It's just kind of a big hole. What do you um, think of the bridge? I have to ask about the bridge. I like the bridge. Yeah. I guess. I don't really know what those buttons are for, though. But. Uh, electronic parking brake, brake hold if you're in stop-and-go traffic, uh, hill descent control if you're taking this off-road, which I have, this one, and uh, drive mode switch for eco, normal, sport, that kind of stuff. There you go. Dual zone climate, Apple CarPlay, which is wireless. It's worked a whole lot better than the last car we had with wireless. Yeah, but it also Apple has Apple. actual buttons. I, know. I do like and the actual knob. buttons and a knob. Yeah. I like yeah. that. So then also you wanna I wanted to talk about the uh, speed limit you can see in your dashboard. Yep. In your controls. So it has in your uh, cluster. Yes, yes. So uh, it does have traffic sign recognition. And so we've got an actual physical speedometer, but everything else is on a screen that I can barely see from here. So it's got a very narrow field of view. So really all I can see is the speedometer from over here. Mm -hmm, but from the driver's seat. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. Yep, a lot of different things you can cycle through over there. What about the steering wheel? Mm -hmm. I like the steering wheel, but I feel like it could be a tad smaller. Okay. Like circumference. Diam okay. Yeah. Is that circumference? Mm -hmm. Circumference <laughs> around diameter. diameter is... Okay, yeah. The, I think the circumference could be better, but, or smaller. Yep. But, um, but it does, with it being bigger, it does the position that I have my steering wheel in. I can see that all of the stuff on the yep. cluster. So, I guess that's the reason it's bigger. But, um, also the steering wheel is a telescope and mm -hmm. up and down so i like that there's a lot of ways to position it seat comfort <sighs> no so this is one of my <laughs> my doubts so there's a lot I feel they're fine. there's a lot to like about this car and there are a few uh, just a couple of things that are not quite there yeah. and the seat comfort is one of them Interesting. That is kind of a deal breaker. So what is it about it? Um, so I have sat in this car a lot longer than you. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I took a, you know, two hour trip yep. somewhere. I've, I've driven it a few more miles than you. Um, and I was probably about 15 minutes into my two hour trip and my back started hurting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I initially sit in it, you're not necessarily like, oh, this is an uncomfortable seat. Yeah. But sitting there for a while and then there, there's not really a lumbar support. Um, and there's only like so many things that you could do at the back, which are, uh, what do you call them, automatic? Power. Powered. Powered no, seats, which I, re I really appreciate the powered seats. I'm uh, fully manual you're over here. So. I do like, like the powered seats, but... Yeah, yeah my, my back just started hurting, which I don't like that. What about uh, rear seat room? Well, if you're talking about seats, too, yeah. um, you don't have the two-person memory seats, nope. so that's another downside. But I don't know the price of this vehicle. However, I have read between the lines of some things you said, and so I think this is probably a more affordable vehicle. Mm -hmm. So for the pr right price, I could do without memory seats. Um, Comes into I, play with our two d yeah, different driving spots. That's true, um, especially because I like the automatic seats. Yeah. So that kind of makes up for it. All right, let's play a game we haven't played in a while. Real leather, fake leather. Fake. Real. Really? Yep. The EXL, the L is leather. Well, let me say a caveat to that. Um, the only re it does not feel like it's fake leather. Yeah. That's not why I said that. Okay. Um, I said that because, again, it's everywhere. I have, no, I have, well, it's everywhere, and you have made me believe that this is an affordable car. It is. So I'm like, so since it's everywhere, I'm like, it can't be real leather. Yeah. It's got to be fake. Let's uh, go to the back seat real quick. I will put Tucker's child safety seat in, and then I'll show you a little bit of uh, how much luggage space is way back there in the very back. All right, installing Tucker's child safety seat here in the back seat of the Honda HRV EXL. First, I want to note. 
The doors open up nice and wide, making it very easy uh, to get the car seat in. These back seats are 60-40 split, but they don't recline. So this is the normal pitch you get on the back. I've already lifted the headrest to get that top tether through. And while we're talking about top tethers, there are only two outboard top tether locations, latch points on the back of the seat. Uh, no center seat location. So if you want three across, this probably isn't the best vehicle for you. Those lower latch points are exposed and are very easy to hook up and get latched into place. And there's plenty of room in here to really get in and tighten it down. I will note also the center seat belt does come out of the ceiling here. So you do have to connect it at the base if you plan on using the middle seat for anyone, much less a child seat. So that's something else. And then thanks to the short overhang of the rear hatch, even though it's large, uh, it's very easy to open the rear hatch and tighten up that rear tether. But overall, I give this a solid A. And while we are talking top tethers, you can see there are only two latch points for the outboard seats back here in the back. But thanks to the relatively short overhang, my 510 frame can easily reach in here and tighten this down. But you can see it does squish the seat material just a little bit, but we do have a hard back right here. So it's nothing too serious and it's fairly easy to tighten up back here. All right, now cargo space on this is plenty for our family of three with 24.2 cubic feet of storage space behind this manually operated hatch. And you can see it opens up wide enough for me at 510. You also get a 60-40 split bench rear seat that opens this up to over 50 cubic feet of storage space. So this rear storage space alone it is as big as a Chevy Tahoe's rear storage space, which much bigger vehicle, but in a nice compact platform. And if you're curious what that looks like for luggage, that's our largest suitcase that we own. Fits in there uh, lengthways right here, so no problems there. And yeah, it absolutely swallows up all of our stuff. And I still have great visibility out of the back. Doesn't even come over the rear seats. So very nice cargo capacity here in the HRV. All right, Holly, we've talked about exterior styling, interior styling, luggage space. Uh, I've put Tucker's car seat in. Any other things that we have not hit with this before I pull out the window sticker? Yes. Driving, driving dynamics oh. and character. Oh, yes, we need to talk about driving. But before we get to that, because you were talking about the luggage space. Okay. Lots of space back there. A ton. For, we could fit everything we needed to. Absolutely. But it's not a power hatch. Nope, 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 nope. And you know how I feel about the power hatch. But it's a low enough vehicle that it's oh. really not an issue. Like your mom has a Santa Fe and she's having to jump to try and That's get it. That's true, so. and use all your weight yeah. to pull it down. Yeah. I don't know. All right, how's this thing um, like to drive? I have really liked driving it. It's been really smooth to drive. So it has a 156 horsepower, two liter, four cylinder engine. And uh, how's that transmission? It's good. We talked a little bit about, about it the last time we were driving it. Continuously variable transmission, so it doesn't actually like shift. Mm -hmm. uh, it's continuously varying. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, it's, it's a thing. It is what it is. <laughs> no, I mean, so, I have had a little bit of a hard time like scooching up like in front of people in yeah. traffic, like getting up like fast enough. Yeah. So other than that though, it's been a very smooth transition transmission. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah so I haven't noticed it. Um, the other thing about driving this vehicle, which you will be su surprised I even tried out, it, but I did it on accident was the um, cruise control. Adaptive cruise control? Adaptive cruise mm -hmm. control. Impressive. Which I did it on accident because I am already not a fan of adaptive cruise control and this car did not change my mind. Oh no, okay. It, it, I, you haven't done it yet. Oh on, yes. On this car? Oh uh, yeah. Did you like it? I think it's one of the better ones that I've sampled. You weren't on I-20. No? Yeah, I I didn't like it. Okay. okay. I, 
Again, I normally don't like it, mm. but... This one didn't change your mind. It did not change my mind. It, it felt like it was breaking too far away mm. in front of... Um, when the Which are. you can change the gap, and oh, I know okay. you don't typically use it, so I won't give and you. And I a turned tip. it on by accident. Okay, you can change the gap, so that makes me feel better. I didn't know I had it on, so that's part of the problem, yeah. because I had my cruise control set at a certain speed, and this must be like very far back, because I was like, yeah. why am I going ten miles per hour below? <laughs> what my cruise control is for because I was so far away from the other car it didn't even dawn on me until I was like it's broken it's broken I don't know why it's broken so but. not exactly peppy but fine in traffic fine on a, a cruise just don't try and race anybody in this one Oh, I, no, I definitely yeah. wouldn't try to race anyone. What them. about uh, visibility? We've got blind spot monitors, mm -hmm. but you don't really need them. Pretty good visibility yeah, out of this car. Yeah, pretty good visibility. I haven't had any problems. Honda's right. very proud about uh, designing cars that you can actually see mm -hmm. out of. Mm -hmm. So, any other thoughts before the window sticker? I don't think so. All right, so we talked about engine. I'm going to go ahead. 25 MPG City, 30 highway, 27 combined. In a vehicle that is all-wheel drive. We didn't even talk about this one is all-wheel drive, so okay. very nice there. This one is an EXL, which is at the top of the line. It's all-wheel drive. Um, the not really much in the way of options outside of the, uh, what do they call it, Nordic Forest paint color. Yeah. What would you say this car stickers for? Here's that CVT. Come on. Uh, I don't know. It's just not you my hear favorite. that purr. It, it's not my favorite. Anyway, what do you what do that you think roar. this stickers for? Um, I'm gonna go thirty-eight. No. Okay. That would put it above the Honda Accord we tested earlier, but uh, more also, pricier than the Accord. If, oh. if it were thirty-eight, it is only thirty thousand five ninety, as this one says. Thirty-seven five. 30,000. Uh, 30,000? 30, yeah, 30,000. Wow. For an all-wheel drive vehicle. So uh, one of the biggest competitors to have just hit the streets uh, for this is the Chevy Trax. Chevy ditched all-wheel drive in that one to make it more affordable. That one tops out at 26 and some change. Yeah. So this one is a little bit pricier, but leather, all-wheel drive. Uh, some seat. Yeah, some people right. that is a deal breaker, the all wheel drive. So, well, and you also have to remember that this vehicle is a Honda, and Honda is known for making vehicles mm -hmm. that last for a really long time. So, yeah. um, sometimes you can do without the things like ventilated seats mm -hmm. or we do have heated memory seat. and stuff. Oh, we do have heated yeah. seats. That's nice. Um, for a vehicle that is affordable and will last you for a long time. So now that you know the window sticker, could you see us in this? You said it's bigger than the Chevy Cruze. To be honest. Nelly Cruise. <laughs> yeah, Nelly Cruise. <laughs> to be honest, the seat issue it's was it's a problem. Yeah. A deal breaker. It was a deal breaker for, for me. Yeah. Well. So definitely test drive it. Yeah. Make sure it fits your body type. Yes. Now on that bombshell, we will go ahead and sign off. If you want to see more behind the scenes stuff, more stuff from Holly, Tucker, myself, you can go find Holly on Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find me and all our stuff at GT Garage Talk on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, everything you name it is at GT Garage Talk. Or you can go read more about this vehicle and our thoughts on it that did not make it into this video or either of my solo reviews, because I did take this one off road. Go read those at gtgaragetalk.com. But until next time, gearheads. Space on this crap. <laughs>